Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some most needed work to the rear subframe of the VR4. Now, previously you just saw me redo in my last video the front subframe, and I'll just show you guys again here really quick. Everything in here is coated, painted, and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, and hopefully we can do about the same quality of work to the rear of the car as well. We're going to be getting into doing the all wheel steering delete, which I am definitely looking forward to doing that. So let's just jump right into this. First, uh, we're, we're going to have to get this rear subframe out. There's a couple things to do it. It shouldn't be too bad. We do need to get the wheels off. Now I already did um, remove the lock nuts on here. I was able to get all these off. These are stupid and annoying. So we got all those taken care of. Now we can just zip off the actual, um, the normal lugs and we'll get this thing up in the air, do a couple preliminary things, and then we'll get hopefully get this knocked out and get this rear subframe out of here. So we can get everything cleaned up, nice, ready to go, do our mods that we need to do, inspect all the, uh, the suspension components. We got the car up in the air. It's all on jacks underneath. Everything seems to be pretty secure. Um, now I'm just going around and spraying some WD-40 on my brake lines and any of my bolts that I need to remove and take off from here. So that way we hopefully don't have issues with anything getting seized or stuck. Now I'm looking at this, kind of just running through everything that we need to take off and remove in order to get this out of the car. And it's really not that much. So the things we need are, we need to remove the struts, brake lines, drive shaft, exhaust, and I believe maybe the e-brake cables. Other than that, it's pretty much just the four main subframe bolts. Our brake line is off. I have it taped up so nothing, no crap or crud gets into there. Um, next, I'm gonna move on to the strut down here. Now with both of our struts removed, we're gonna do the exhaust next. Now that the exhaust is out of the car, we can now move on to getting the drive shaft um, out from underneath here. Now before you do this, you will want to confirm that your e-brake, your emergency brake, inside the vehicle is released and off. You do not want this tightened because if it's tightened, you cannot spin your drive shaft in order to get to all the nuts underneath because your e-brake isn't allowing your axles to turn. And here is the four nuts right down here. And you can see, guess what? We can spin this now that our e-brake is released. Um, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna focus on the all wheel steering lines that come to this rear. We're going to have to work on both sides since it's there's two lines on each side. This is going to be the side for the driver's side. We have a, clamp, a clip right here and also another clip right here. One's a bolt, one's just pliers. We'll get these off and then we can remove this whole entire rail going all the way up. Previously, when I worked on the front subframe, you saw me, or at least I told you I cut that line off. That's exactly what I did. It's just cut off up there and we can remove this whole entire bottom uh, cover piece down here. Now that those lines are all disconnected, we can come underneath and we have this tray piece that runs all the way along, along the bottom side. There is a couple nuts that are holding it in and we're just gonna come in here and follow these all down. Now we're on the other side and same process here. The only difference is it is these two lines right there. You cannot break them off with your wrench um, we're just gonna cut them. I just removed the lines for the power steering on the passenger side down here. You saw me crack those loose, and then we also reinstalled and put back in our cover brake shield piece right in here. I put this back in. This is what covers the brake line. I'll go show you those lines here so you know what they look like. They're just like really long, um, thick lines, and that's pretty much about it right there. Uh, all wheel steering lines. Are removed from this car they're deleted there's no going back at this point um, what we need to do now is it looks like we're gonna need to disconnect 
this uh, sensor piece right here. There's actually a harness clip underneath the car. If you follow that line up, you can disconnect it from. I believe the last thing that we have is we need to remove the e-brake cables from the car. Otherwise, those are still gonna be attached to the rear brake hubs, which you do not want. Um, I'm gonna do this from the inside of the car. That's the only way I can think of doing it so we don't have to get into the actual calipers and stuff. Um, so we'll come in here and we're gonna need to get access to underneath this panel here. So we're gonna take out some of these screws, remove some of these trim pieces. There should be four screws that hold in the center console. We're gonna unscrew this completely off of here so that we can get both of these cables off um, on each side here, we can disconnect them. And this is kind of similar to the throttle cable, the way that this works. We need to slide this out of the slot. The cable needs to be pushed to this side and then this is the where it pushes out, it pushes out the bottom. You need that wire to come outside of this slot here. So we're gonna push this wire all the way over so that way we can push this down and get that wire out of the slot. You can see they just go into these two little tubes right here and they carry out the bottom side of the car. Now we'll ha I'll have to go underneath and make sure there's nothing else connected on the bottom side, but that should pretty much be about it. They should just fall right out when we do actually drop the subframe on this. Finishing up on the e-brake, I did. you do have to pull your drive shaft carrier bearing down off the car. It's just these two nuts, one here, one here. They're both threaded. And the reason is because to get our e-brake lines off, there is another bolt holding these on. You can actually see one right here. That one bolts right there. And then there's also one for this side too as well, um, right here. So these are 12 mil, we'll get these off. And then these e-brakes pull out of actually right, right up in there. We can pull them straight out of those slots. Um, so we'll do that once we break these bolts loose here. After you get those bolts on out, you can see this one's already pulled out. These will just pull right out of the sockets up there. We can drop these down. Now we get to the actual main subframe bolts here underneath. I'm seeing, uh, I believe six. So we got one right here up top. We'll get this one. And then the ones in front, we got this one right here. And then there's this one bolt up here. This one's a 17. We're gonna crack all these loose with a breaker bar first, and then we'll hit them with the impact. And we'll make sure that our actual subframe is supported, obviously before we unbolt any of these, but we're just gonna crack them loose right now. Now with all of our bolts and nuts, everything out of here, it's those six main ones that I'm seeing. Uh, I did start to see a drop on that other side and I'm pretty sure tension's off here. So the only thing that's holding this on should be the jack. Um, and that's how it should be. You don't want this thing to just drop and come flying down. You want this supported. Um, so let's lower our jack and we're gonna drop this down and everything should come down smoothly. While lowering this out, it seemed like the passenger side was stuck on me a little bit because one side, um, I got the driver's side completely off and out, ready to go. And this driver's side seemed to be stuck on this front one right here. I just sprayed some WD-40 on the bolt and I kind of hit it with a hammer and it looks like it broke loose. This one up here seems to be fine in the rear, um, but definitely a little bit of maneuvering here and there. Um, let's try to lower this thing again here and see if we can finally get this out. Now that we actually have the rear subframe out, this is everything that we're working with right here. So just take a look, um, especially specifically with this all wheel steering for this rack and pinion back here. This is the actual rack for the rack and pinion. These are your outer tie rods, goes all the way across. And you can just see all of these lines and this mess in here um, that goes to it. And if you're wondering why your rack's leaking in the rear somewhere, it's probably because there's like 40 different lines back here and there's so many different areas and spots where it can leak. So that's why, partly why um, we're gonna be doing an all wheel steering delete on this car is so that we reduce any potential leaks on this car. Now there was no leaks beforehand that I'm aware of, but not only does this kind of simplify things, make it easier, but it's also a great weight reduction and we should be able to kind of tighten up the rear end too as well. 
Um, what I'm going to start by doing with this is we need to get off all the brackets and bolts and everything that holds on all of this junk on here and kind of just start disassembling stuff. So I'm just going to start spraying stuff down with some WD-40, make sure all of our bolts break loose. Everything with the all-wheel steering now is disconnected, and this looks already so much cleaner. Um, it just needs to be cleaned up. It's super dirty right now, but we're going to take these calipers off, just leave these off the car for now. But we just need to get these clips off, get the lines, remove them all. What I'm going to do is I need to plug off this little spot right here that goes into the rear diff. I'm going to show you that in the delete kit here in just a moment. This is the 3000 GT in Stealth rear steer delete kit for your vr4 or your twin turbo um, this is a really nice kit right here that i'm definitely excited to try out now i showed you guys how to plug off the front lines when i did when i worked on my front subframe they were just two bolts that just go right into your rack they plug in pretty easy um, but right now we're going to be working on the rear and it's a little bit more involved um, so right here at the top of this kit we have this metal plug there's nothing fancy to this it even says on it's a 40 millimeter plug i'm sure you could probably get this at your hardware store too we're going to get this out because we're going to use this to plug the rear differentials and we're going to find ourselves a nice socket to fit it so we can tap it in with a hammer looks like the socket will work out just fine let's go put this in we're just going to clean out kind of the inside of this make sure all the edges are clean here hit it with some brake clean and just a rag then we'll just take this put a little bit of sealant of your favorite choice all the way around it and then we'll just tap it in what i'm going to start to do now is we need to start cleaning up um, and kind of assessing what we have here and disassembling a little bit so we're just going to spray some cleaner on it uh, degrease everything and then hit it with the power washer Now that everything is pretty much cleaned up and pressure washed for the most part, I'm just starting to disassemble some odds and ends. Um, we're just breaking all these nuts loose. I'm gonna try to get some of these arms and suspension pieces out of here. And I need to separate and get this rear differential off of this so that way this doesn't weigh like a couple hundred pounds because this is the bulk of the weight um, right here, this center mass. So I just loosened up all these axle nuts on here. We're gonna get all four of these loosened all the way around. You just spin it, rotate it, get to all of them. I cracked them all loose. So we, we'll get all these out of here. That should disconnect your half shaft from right here. And then we should be able to pull this out. I just got off the main core support that goes on the back right here. And when you take this off, what it allows you to do is flip this up so you can get a little bit access to your bolts here on the sides. So there's a couple over here on the sides. You can kind of see them. And then there's also a couple over here on the sides and these are pretty tight on there. This diff is completely separated right now. I'm gonna take this, we'll get this out of here. I'm working on the sway bar end link here next. It's got this one um, nut on the bottom side right here. I already took this one off. This is separated. We got a bracket right here um, with these two bolts going here, one on the other side. And right now we're just working on getting this nut off here on the bottom. Um, you will need to put a 14 millimeter on the back side to hold it from spinning probably. And then just get your other wrench over here. This one I already cracked loose. We'll go ahead and slip this one all the way off here.
Now we pretty much just have the bare rear subframe right here. Both trailing arms are off. We're just gonna get the rest of some of this hardware off of here. And so that way we can get everything cleaned up a little better. I'm gonna start by disassembling this trailing arm here a little bit. We need to get this tow arm off of here or this trailing arm, whatever you wanna call it. There's one bolt that goes through it here. It's a 17 millimeter, and then you'll need a 19 millimeter on the backside to keep this from turning. So you'll wanna spray this area down with some WD-40 right in between here. Um, and also where that bolt went through that we just took out. And then you just kinda wanna Whack at it with a hammer a little bit. Um, give it some good smacks kind of this way. Work both sides. And you should see this start to kind of separate. It's already starting to separate right there. If that doesn't work, you can take some heat to it. I had to do that on my last one, but it looks like I'm able to knock this one out. And then we'll take off the rest of these bolts that hold the e-brake cable as well as the other one. This is a kind of a, like a fancier piece right here, this bracket. I'll have to make sure to put this on the right way. So we'll get this in here, get some good shots. I'm just removing the ball joint right now on the bottom side with this nut. Um, there's really, I'm gonna be replacing these ball joints since I don't see a way to disconnect this part right here without actually breaking this or busting this. It's going to have to because we're going to need to separate this anyways to paint it. I can't paint it with it on there. It's just going to be too difficult. So we're just going to take a fork, get it in here, maybe add a little bit of heat, and give it a couple wax to get this knocked off of here. That's going to be a wrap for this video. Just a teardown and disassembly of the rear subframe. Stay tuned for a part two.